So what's the best way to get a second date? Sleep with the girl on the first date. Oh, that's ridiculous. Dinner dates, very bad move for before you've had sex. Really good move after. <laughs> so what's the opposite of boring? Too excited? Or? Too gamey. It's your job to lead. It's her job to slow things down. Spirituals right. and stuff. And it's like, it would turn me off, you know? Which girl's more likely to play? Online. Of course. Of course. Right? It's just so <laughs> obvious. Then they're like too forward and too pushy. And then you got to be like, well, you can't be that pushy. And like, well, you just told me to be pushy. So this is a problem I run into a lot and I actually dealt with. Welcome to the Inner Confidence Podcast, where we bring you men's dating and lifestyle advice that doesn't suck. I'm your host, Robbie Kramer, a former collegiate golfer turned poker pro turned finance guy who became obsessed with learning about male female attraction and dynamics and passionate about teaching men how to improve and optimize their love life. Tune in each week and we'll bring you the latest and greatest strategies on how to get more dates, how to build a thriving social circle that brings the best men and women into your life, how to become a better networker and how to design a lifestyle that makes all your Buddy's jealous. If you're new to the show, I recommend you download my first date protocol. It's the best piece of content I have. It'll help you optimize your first date and subsequent dates. And I like to connect with my listeners personally. So if you want to grab a copy of that, please send me a direct message on Instagram. I'm at Robbie underscore Kramer. Now let's dive into this week's content. Welcome back to the Inner Confidence Podcast. I'm your host. We already did that in the introduction, so you know who I am. And this is my lovely wife, Maria. Hi. And today we have an episode on the eight lethal dating mistakes that will ruin your chances with that girl that you took on a date forever. So make one of these mistakes and it could ruin the whole thing. You know, getting dates with beautiful women, especially ones that you're really into, uh, for most guys isn't easy. For the guys in, you know, the inner confidence community, it's quite easy because we're using all the strategies to do that and to gain more leads. But Really, you don't want to be messing this stuff up because obviously it's like you you went to all that hard work to get the date. I mean, at least put in the right amount of effort to make that date be optimal. And I would say out of everything, you know, this is such a crucial step in the process where it's like you can control almost everything because like she agreed to go on a date with you in the first place, right? So she's expressed some interest. She she could have done anything that night and she's choosing to spend it with you. So if you are not really putting a lot of time and attention to detail into your dates to optimize them, well, shame on you because other guys are doing it and your competition is, is out there, right? And if you stay to the end after I, we give you the most, you know, the eight lethal mistakes, I'm going to show you a way to get flakes really under control before the date. Because the last thing anyone wants is, you know, for the date to flake last minute. So I've got a strategy to help eliminate flakes. Obviously, you're never going to be able to eliminate them completely, but this will make a big difference. So before we dive in, um, you have anything you want to say about your experience uh, with like guys running bad dates versus good dates? You, luckily, you didn't go on a ton of dates before. <laughs> before I got married, yeah. yes. Um, I mean, I will share some experience uh, in future if it will be re related to me. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, girls always flakes. It's not about the guy. It's about, you know, they found something better. You know, they got invited on like a um, concert and they want to go. You know, they will flake on you. It's not about you. It's about them finding something better to do. Well, and, let's talk about flakes in the end. Yeah. But I agree. Um, if a girl does flake on you a lot of the time... It's because it had nothing to do with you. And sometimes it's because you, you know, met, messed some of these things up. So yeah, let's do but it. But it's mostly about messaging. If the guy messaged too much before the date, you know, like we scheduled the date, you know, for a week, maybe write me once and say, or like one that's for a, the date. That's the for date. a different podcast. Okay. We're not going over that. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> well, we've got lots of other trainings on texting and how to create the, you know, how to best set up the date. But like I said, let's leave that for another another time. You okay. can watch other videos on the channel. We've done podcasts where we go over that. You know, the the texting mistakes ones we've we've done. I really recommend those ones because we go over all that in very excruciatingly small detail. So you guys don't mess that up. So number one mistake is going to the wrong venues. And what's the stereotypical like first date? What is you know uh, the restaurant? The restaurant exactly. And why do dinner dates suck? First, because you sit in front of each other 
and there is no chemistry. You know, you just like so far away from each other, you like eating food or it's like a little bit awkward of speaking, you know, and after when you like going back home, you like had zero chemistry. You just had like little talk, you ate your food. And, and after a lot of girls were like, oh, I didn't felt anything. Sorry. I didn't feel the chemistry between us, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, you can't control the time frame in a dinner, right? You're at the mercy of the restaurant, the wait staff, how long the food takes. And like, maybe she's going to show up and really like you and you're going to want to kiss her within like the first 10 or 15 minutes, but you won't be able to because you're sitting across from a table mm -hmm. and it's not like making out in a restaurant is, a, you know, it's not really social thing, protocol. Yeah. So you can't control that. And it's not like you can just get up and be like, all right, we're getting a check and going back to my place. Cause that's obviously, you know, too crass. Mm -hmm. Um, so you're really just at the mercy of that, of that timetable and some dinner dates. Like if you go to a nice restaurant, it's going to take like an hour and a half, two hours, and it's going to be incredibly like difficult to manage the vibe. And sometimes they can like forget something from your order or like forget about your order or just like you wait for your food for like 50 minutes. There's all and sorts of things that are going to go wrong. Yeah. The waiter's going to come over. He's going to interrupt you. Right. Like it's you're adding variables to the equation. Anytime you do that in math, it makes the equation more complicated. We, we want to remove variables, not add them. Yeah, so, but it's like when you just meet the girl for the first time, because now we're married. We're going for dates all the time. Of you course, know? we're talking about first dates. Yeah. Here, right. Like, if, hey, if you guys are already sleeping together, great. Do dinner dates. Yeah, I'm, glad, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this isn't like... <laughs> <laughs> overall dating mistakes. I you love restaurants. Probably, <laughs> of course. I mean, it's, we go to dinner dates every month for our anniversary. Yeah. Right. We just went on one last night, a nice French restaurant, got some amazing burgers. So dinner dates, very bad move for before you've had sex, really good move after. <laughs> so other, other things that fall into that category are movies, any sort of show comedy clubs. Uh, why do you think these suck? You don't have time to speak. You just exactly. like you, the focus of attention is on the thing you're watching. Yeah. Right. And you can make the argument, well, yeah, if you're at a movie, you can do like the subtle escalation and stuff. But it's like, no. again, if it's the first date in the first venue, you're probably not going to do that. And if you do, it's, you know, can can you break these rules? No, but it's yes, also, maybe. But why would you want to? For me, it's about, oh, my God, he couldn't come up with anything more interesting than a movie. You know, right. like movie cliche. Come on, really, that's super cliche. Another bad date. And this is kind of going to segue into the next one a little bit, but like anywhere that's like a, you know, a really brightly lit coffee shop or something that has like no vibe to it whatsoever, mm -hmm. you know, like a big, like corporate looking Starbucks, you know, Hey, if you're just going to meet the date there for the, for 10 minutes, grab a coffee and then leave, that's fine. But like sitting at a brightly, you know, lit place as a long venue one is, is not a good date either. So that's mistake number one. Mistake number two, doing dates where you don't have enough time to potentially have like actually hook up, right? Like, so guys but will want ho hook up, uh, you have mean sex, like a uh, kiss, have sex. So what's the best way to get a second date? Sleep with the girl on the first date. Oh, that's ridiculous. Now what happens. <laughs> It happens all the time. I know, but like how many girls do uh, sleep? A with lot the of guy? them. I'm not sure about <laughs> a that. A lot of them. Trust me. That's not you're, true. You're the exception, not the rule. You don't have the data on this. I do. Trust me. So lots of girls will sleep with you on the first date. But um, do you want to actually date a girl afterwards? That's a different conversation. Maybe, oh. maybe not. Right. We're talking about the best way to see a girl is to have, have sex with her on the first date. And that's probably why you're on the date. She might not want to do that, which is fine. Right. Like that's. We're not trying to push girls to have sex as fast as we can, but if she does want to have sex, you should see yourself as the guy who's mo moving the interaction forward. And she's going to, you know, want to do those things on her terms. Okay. But so, if every girl will sleep on every single, her first date, why would every girl sleep? Like, let's just remove every from, that's never going to happen. <laughs> That's just it's, weird. Okay. I'm not arguing for whether or not it's good. I'm saying what, what guys should do mm. to like optimize their first dates. Like, so I'm not saying you have to, like, and we're going to get into this later, but like <laughs> you should have time when you schedule that date for the date to go as long as it possibly no, can. That's true. Because if the girl is really into you and, and she wants to have sex with you, then yes, I 
do understand it. But if the girl is like, they're not so touchy and they're not, you know, they're not giving you so much like um, emotions for you to understand that she's ready for something. Then if the guy is pushing, it's I'm, I'm not, I'm not talking about pushing. That's coming later. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Let's try to stay on topic. Okay. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just talking about don't schedule dates at four in the afternoon because I'm sure she's got stuff to do later on the evening. If you have a business meeting at nine and you schedule a date for six o'clock, that's really silly because if the date's going really well and you know you guys are getting hot and heavy and you've got to kill that vibe, you're, you know, you're making it harder for the next time because she might go on a date tomorrow and hook up with that guy and then decide she want to be with him instead. Right. So anytime okay, you but let what the, is the perfect time, for schedule me? your dates around eight 30, which is after dinner, mm -hmm. you start with drinks mm -hmm. and you can go all night. Right. It's not like she's going to have something scheduled to do after that. So but what do you change? Do you change places? We're going to, we're going to get into that. Okay. Um, these are just mistakes, mm -hmm. right? So the mistake is doing lunch dates, doing breakfast dates or coffee dates. Obviously there's exceptions to every rule, right? If she's only free for these certain periods of time, should, can you do it? Okay. If she's really hot. Sure. Yeah. But a lot of the time girls will make an exception if you stick to your guns, right? Like mm -hmm. she might be like, Oh, I'm kind of busy. Um, so why don't we meet at like seven o'clock? And, you know, we'll just grab drinks for an hour and, you know, I'll have to go. And if you're like most guys, you're going to be like, okay, sure, let's do that. Mm -hmm. But you're setting yourself up for a boring, you know, time limited date versus if you say, ah, now let's just wait for another day when, when you actually have time, you don't have anything scheduled later on. And then she'll be like, oh, actually my schedule freed up. Let's meet. That happens or all the time. Or she will say, okay, and after she will actually be even more into you because you were, you, you weren't thirsty to see her. Exactly. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's your job to lead. It's her job to slow things down. Mm -hmm. Right. And don't set yourself up to where you can't do that. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing. Uh, mistake number three is doing elaborate dates because those sorts of dates are usually very far from your house. What does elaborate mean? Like a big fancy thing, like going to the zoo oh or like, you know, doing this like hike that's far away. Cause like anytime you have to, drive somewhere or she has to drive somewhere, you're just creating extra logistics. The idea is to have a connection and go back to your place after, you know, well, I'm going to get into venue changing, but the idea is again, <laughs> for the date to end in a sexual connection, because no, that's why you're both there. You're be... there as a man and a woman. So don't do dates that are far away from your house because that's going to make it harder to get back to your house. Now, if she lives really far away, don't meet in the middle. That's terrible. Better to go to her and that way she can invite you back to her place. Or she can come to you. Depends where do you live. If you live in really good big city, obviously it's better if someone comes to you. Because if someone lives in like small town, there is nothing to do. Like if you will go there, that's like bad. Yeah, the rule of thumb is he who lives outside of civilization comes to the person that lives in civilization. Yeah, right? because you can find <laughs> cool places. Yeah. So try to find venues. I'm going to talk about the, the dating protocol. In the dating protocol that I have, we have a very specific four venue protocol, right? And I'll get into some of those later after we go through the, the mistakes. But the idea is venue one, two, and three are all very close to your house. Venue four is your house. It could also be venue four at her house. And then you'd want venue one, two, and three being really close. So close you can walk in between. Some cities, this is difficult. Other cities like New York City, this is really easy, right? Um, but don't do dates that are far away because again, you're making it really hard to hook up if that date goes well. Mistake number four, being boring. Uh, I don't think people can control it, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, they can. This is the biggest mistake ever. Now, if you just show up and you try to have a good dinner date, mm -hmm. you're going to be boring because guess what? Like you probably haven't, studied the art of conversation and you're not that interesting and witty and cool. But if you follow the dating protocol, which shows you built in ways to flirt, ways to create sexual tension, ways to have conversations that steer towards the things that she's interested in, that create an emotional connection that you're interested in, then you're never going to be boring. But for the average guy who isn't taking the time to learn this stuff, his default, even if he's like a cool guy, is going to be boring because there's that little bit of awkwardness. It's the first date. 
right? And you're probably going to start with this, the biographical exchange of information. And if you don't know how to transition that vibe from like flirty and to into deep rapport and back to flirting, like you don't know how to shift gears, then you're going to get stuck in that. And I'm sure you've been on dates before where it's like the guy was attractive, he was cool, but he was just boring because you guys just talked about, you know, boring stuff the whole time. Yeah. And it gets so awkward that like you want to leave as soon as possible and you like you know, writing your girlfriend, can you call me and say that there is an emergency, please? Because it's so awkward and you like, you don't know how to deal with that. Right. And you just like escape. So remember, she's on a date with you, which means she likes you. Mm -hmm. She could have done anything that night. She went out with you, Mm -hmm. right? There's already this man woman context. It's a, you know, if we like each other, then we will go into on down the romantic path, right? So you need to flirt. Right. You can't just sit there and think that talking about like your job is going to be interesting. To her. I mean, if you want to be in the friend zone, then yes, you're right. welcome. It's but Quickest ticket to the friend zone yeah. being boring. Right. And guys who don't have a plan, you will be boring. I promise. Um, when I teach my clients a dating protocol and just the simple flirty ways, like the second she shows up, there's ways to flirt. You're never going to be boring. Right now, the next mistake, not so uh, surprisingly, is what's the opposite of boring? Too excited or what? Too too gamey, I right? Don't know what this means? Like, so let's say you're really worried about being boring, mm-hmm. so you study so much attraction material that you just overgame the hell out of her, right? You study all these routines, and you're like reading her palms, and then you're oh, like, that's so like, bad. I mean, so, some palm reading can be fine, but if you're doing just routine after routine after routine. And you're never making a connection. You're never actually getting to know her. And it's just like flash game after flash game after this and after that. That's going to look really uncalibrated. But I also can relate it to the guys who goes to like super intimate and deep stuff conversations. That's like, man, I see you like first time or, you know, we speak on like IG. I don't want to share with you something so intimate about like my life. or. No, you're talking about the one client we have who shares... Who tries to talk about really like deep, co- deep like something topics, really s- spiritual <laughs> right. and stuff. And it's like, it would turn me off. You know, it's like, I want to talk about basic stuff to at least get to know you as a person and understand if I really like you and I trust to share with you something, you know, more. Deep. Right. You have to let the conversation flow there naturally. Yeah. Right. Like you don't want to talk about religion. You don't want to talk about politics. Yeah. Spirituality is very similar to religion. So yeah. that's, that's a dangerous one. Even if you're the same religion, even if you're the same spirituality, like, yeah, that's probably a little bit safer, but those conversations aren't necessarily that sexy. They're not sexy at all. (laughs) It's like, be careful, right? Um, It's a booby trap. Yeah. So, and remember, like women aren't probably studying how to be like great conversationalists on dates. They don't care. Right. They don't care. It's not something that they really need to worry about because Mm -hmm. the frame that they have is typically like, all right, he asked me on a date. I hope he impresses me or let's see if he can impress me. Yeah, um, of course, because it's it's not like guys are getting invited on dates every day. You know, well, it's just it, like, when you go on enough dates, you can flip that frame and you can go uh, in yeah, qualifying but it's, her it's social circle. It's different. No, no, no I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm saying if you're a guy who gets a lot of dates, just like think about a job interview, right? Like who's got the power in a job interview? Usually the person doing the hiring, mm-hmm. right? You're coming in, you're interviewing for the job. I'm asking you questions to see if you're qualified because I'm the boss, Mm -hmm. right? But if you come into that interview and you kind of flip that script and you start asking questions to me about like, is this company a good fit for me? Then it changes the power dynamic. Mm -hmm. So that's a little trick you can do. You need to qualify her to do something like that. Exactly. And if you never have dates, it's really (laughs) hard to do. Just like if you're really nervous about that one job interview, you really want to get that job. You right. Get the job, You're probably not probably. gonna get the job. Yeah. This is why you need an abundance of, of leads and an abundance of dates so you can improve your conversion rates. Mm-hmm. Right. So mm-hmm. uh being too boring, being you know, over gamey, though. Mm-hmm. So those are the last two mistakes. Ne- next mistake, I guess this is number six, is not being physical enough, not going for the first kiss. I agree, because you will forward the girls out. You know, if you the girl really like you and she went with you on the date, she will probably kiss you, right? But if she won't, you will understand that you're wasting your time. Well, is she going to make the move on you? 
the girl? No, why of would course not. the girl make a move? <laughs> she will not make any moves. She will enjoy her dates without making anything. It's very rare that the girl makes a move. So if you're waiting for her to make a move or for her to give you a blatantly obvious signal to make a move, no. that's that's really that's a big mistake, happen. right? It's your job to, like I said, lead the interaction forward physically. Um, so if you're not like if, if you're not getting a lot of dates and your goal is to get better on dates and get more dates. A great rule, like if you've, another way, if you're not super experienced, right? Like if you've probably slept with less than, I don't know, 30 people. It's less? Like, you kidding me? That's a lot. Well, for you, baby, that's good. But for, for a guy in his late 20s, early 30s, or even for a woman, right? Like that's actually not that many people, right? If you're 35 years old and you became sexually active at 18, Right, so that's seventeen years of sexual activity. I mean, and you've only I, I had thirty didn't know partners. We speak about thirty-five. Maybe for thirty-five, it's okay. It depends on your age, right? But thirty partners is really not a lot. Um, okay. I, I mean, it's a good amount, I guess you could say. But if you have less than that, a great rule of thumb is to try to kiss every girl on the first date. Because guess what? If you kiss her and you get rejected, it almost never means never. It means not yet. Mm -hmm. And when you go for the kiss and you know, she gives you the cheek or she kind of pulls away. At least you have information from that. And at least she knows that like, all right, this guy's trying. At least he's not a, he's not a wuss bag. <laughs> you know, he's not like some. <laughs> I can friend zone that guy. Right. Like you're not going to get friend zone if you go for the kiss. You, you might eventually get like, I'm not interested. Yeah. But the worst case is that like, you know, when you're, when you don't know and when you're like, oh, I don't know if she likes me or not, I'm going to take her on five dates. And they don't do any moves because they don't know. Exactly. So if you want to know how to go for the kiss, you should watch the last podcast uh, where we show an example from a movie. It was the Hitch podcast, I think episode mm -hmm. 242. And we go over uh, how, what to do and what not to do mm -hmm. to go for the first kiss. Mm -hmm. So go for it, right? And go for it in the dating protocol on venue two. And I show you exactly how to create the vibe to go for it. Because that's a big thing is like, if you just lunge for it, I mean, that's better than nothing, but you don't want to do that if it's... You know, you, you obviously want to do it in a smooth way when when you let the, the sexual <laughs> tension build and, you know, you find that right moment and that takes some experience. All right. Mistake number seven. Well, mistake number six was not getting physical enough. Mm -hmm. Mistake number seven is getting too physical, which goes all the way back to when we talked about, I think, the third mistake where you were like, no, they shouldn't be taking girls home on the first date. N miss uh, the nun over here. But Obviously, we don't want to get too physical. We don't want to be the pushy, thirsty chump who's like pushing for sex and you way too excited. You've, I'm sure, dealt with these guys. Yeah, you look, they look so thirsty. You know that that person probably didn't have a sex for a year and you're the perfect chance to have it. You know, that's like you don't want to deal with guys like that. They're just so... I don't know. It's so unattractive. You like can't handle it. It's so unattractive. It's a you huge turn off. To leave it, like immediately. I mean, there's no like when it comes to when it comes to dating. There's like guidelines and best practices, right? Mm -hmm. But if you tell people, you know, you got to be forward, then they usually make the mistake if they listen, <laughs> which is good. Is then they're like too forward and too pushy, and then you got to be like, well, you can't be that pushy. And like, well, you just told me to be pushy. So this is a problem I run into a lot, and I actually dealt with. When I was going through the process, is it's it's hard to find that middle ground, of course, right? You you have to err on both sides. So as you're improving, sometimes you're going to be a little bit on the pushy side, and then you're going to course correct, and you're going to be a little bit on the passive side. And it's all about you know eventually finding that sweet spot. Mm -hmm. But being too physical, touching her too much, touching her inappropriately, like all of those things are such a huge turnoff. Yeah, especially if she's letting you know she doesn't like it. So remember, <laughs> like. A, a great way to to see if she wants to be touched is is she touching you back, right? No, like, of course. Or she touching you herself. First. That's a great yeah. sign, exactly. And the last mistake, number eight, is not having the correct frame. And we kind of went into that a little bit, but essentially, it's the idea that we talked about, which is like who's interviewing who, mm -hmm. right? You're on, I'm taking you out on a date. You're on my date. Mm -hmm. I'm interviewing you for the, your potential role as my girlfriend or what my, you know, one of my girlfriends, mm -hmm. right? So like, I'm the one in control. I'm mm -hmm. interviewing you, not me trying to hope that you like me, not me impressing you. 
right? And I'm also going to be a little bit like entitled, meaning like you're on a date with me. Of course you like me. I'm going to assume that you're attracted to me. I'm going to, I'm going to assume that you like, right. But guys get all like nervous. Like, Oh, well, I don't know if I can do that because like, maybe she's not into me. It's like, dude, she's on the date. She came out with you, right? Like assume it's on. And that will be a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you assume that she likes you, she's going to be like, Oh God, this this guy's confident. He's smooth. I like it. So that's the last one. Now, in terms of what to do instead, um, I, I can't highly recommend enough that you guys download a copy of my dating protocol. It's free. All you got to do is go to Instagram and send me a, a direct message, Robbie, R-O-B-B-I-E underscore Kramer, K-R-A-M-E-R. Just say, you know, send me the dating protocol, jerk, um, or other expl- explicative, is that how you say it? Explicative term, like asshole, schmuck, idiot, whatever you can, you know, I, I always find that funny. So no, don't send this. That's bad. I just don't tell Maria that you sent it. Uh, so send, ask for it. I'll send you a copy. It's going to tell you exactly what to do, which venues to choose, uh, how to follow up before the date, how to follow up after the date and everything in between to make sure that date is executed flawlessly. It's the best piece of content I have. And if you're not doing these things, like, like I said, you're just at a huge disadvantage to the competition. So the last thing, as I promised, is how to eliminate the chance of flakes before the date. Well, the odds of a girl flaking who met you face to face versus who you haven't met online. What do you think the difference is? Which girl is more likely to flake? We meet online. Of course. Of course. Right? It's just so <laughs> obvious. So obviously, my, you know, I'm a big fan of approaching women in real life or meeting them through a social circle that you build and develop. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about your current social circle that consists of like one cute girl and you and all your buddies who compete for her attention (laughs) in your friend zone for the last 10 years. That's I'm talking about building a new social circle of really high value guys and beautiful girls that you can then, you know, leverage into your dating life. That's a great strategy. Approaching is a great strategy. Of course, in the inner confidence community, we've got tons of online dating scripts and we teach you how to, you know, get a lot of dates from that way of from that method too, that funnel, I call it. And the one thing that is a little bit different, like I said, with online dating is, and it's going to depend if if you're using like, you know, which sites, right? Because there's Tinder is more of a hookup site. And you've got sites like Seeking, which is even more of a, you know, (laughs) another sort of, we don't want to go down down that road, but like for the standard sort of Bumble or Hinge, um, Tinder, depending on your city, one way you can really eliminate flakes is to call the girl before the date, right? Once you schedule the date, um, shoot her a message or just like be like, yo, I'm going to call you in a few minutes, pick up, right? And you have a quick conversation. You just have like that vibey, flirty, fun little five minute, 10 minute conversation. If you have that conversation, she's way less likely to flake, Mm -hmm. right? Um, If you don't have that conversation, odds are last minute, right? probably like a 66 to 75% chance she will flake on you. And then you got to play the game of, you know, dealing with the flake and it's just much tougher. So we've got a texting guide to deal with all those things, but that would be my recommendation. So baby, tell them what to do next. Mm, Don't be creepy. Subscribe. Subscribe. (laughs) Don't be creepy and subscribe and put your like. How do you say? Yeah. Like our shit. Yeah. I mean, if you listen this far, Leave us a, you know, leave us a review. Tell us we're ugly. Um, no, you can tell him he's ugly. Tell me that what you think about me. Perfect. Well, hope you got a lot of value from this, guys. If you want any individual help and for me to take a very, you know, direct look at your situation, go to start.innerconfidence.com and we'll jump on the phone for a dating assessment. Until next time. Thanks, baby. See you guys. See you. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you're new to the show and digging our content, please leave us a five-star review on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, wherever you listen or watch. But if you're not really digging it, go ahead. Just don't leave us any review at all. That'd be great. If you're feeling a little bit stuck or you just want to optimize and step up your game, we've opened up a few spots in our inner confidence community. We're accepting applications if you want to join our select group of men and experience the radical power of accountability, cross everything off your sexual bucket list, and just become a beast who gets more stuff done. To learn more and apply, go to start.innerconfidence.com. 